Hi everyone, welcome to video three of our Pump 101 video series. My name is Emily. I'm one of the diabetes educators at Children's Minnesota, and I'm here to walk you through this new insulin pump education. You previously watched video one, which was about our insulin pump ordering process. Video two was about insulin pump therapy in general. And now video three is about the different components of an insulin pump. When we are using an insulin pump, we do need to keep supply of all the things that make up the pump. And so we want to review that so you know what you are getting into. OK, I've got our general disclaimers here. And now we can talk about the parts of an insulin pump. This image is a good overall image showing you how an insulin pump is connected to the body to administer insulin. You can see the body on the right hand side with a circle on the abdomen. That circle is signifying the infusion set where insulin is being infused. The infusion set is connected to tubing, which is then connected to the insulin pump, which is controlling the insulin delivery. On the upper left hand side, we can see kind of a cross cut showing how that infusion set is adhered to the skin and where that cannula is sitting under the skin delivering insulin. We're going to get into that into a, a little more depth on the next slide, but I do like this image a lot. So for an insulin pump, there are three main parts. The first part is the actual insulin pump. This is the part that is managing insulin delivery. The second part is the infusion set. Your infusion set has a cannula that sits under the skin in fatty tissue. It's adhered to the skin with tape um, and looks a little something like this. So this image is how you might insert your infusion set. There are different types of infusion sets, but this is one example. They're very easy to insert. It's something I feel confident that you can do at home. This image is another cross cut uh, showing how that cannula is sitting under the skin. I do wanna show you what that looks like as well from my side. So give me just a second to get that pulled up. Okay, so an infusion set looks something like this. And again, there are multiple types. So I'm gonna use my water bottle. Sorry, it's not focusing to try to give you a better image. So that's a little bit better. So the infusion set, that's what's sitting on your skin. And if I turn this sideways, you can see that little plastic cannula sitting, um, or it's coming out 90 degrees from that it, adhesive. A thing to know about these infusion sets, you can clip in and out, which is really nice. So the way that works is the adhesive is holding that cannula under the skin, and then you can release the tubing to disconnect for showering, bathing, anything like that. And then when you're ready to be reconnected, you can just clip back in. And doing it backwards is very difficult. Sorry, everybody. Satisfying click. <laughs> Okay, let me get back to the PowerPoint. Do, 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 do. There we go. And there we go. Okay, so then your third part of the pump is your reservoir or cartridge. This is the piece that is holding all of the insulin to be delivered to you. We fill our cartridges with enough insulin to last for two to three days, and the max fill is 200 to 300 units, depending on which brand of pump you're using. The reservoir is then inserted into the pump, might look like that, and then connected to the infusion set with tubing. So I was showing you that infusion set before. Sorry, I know I'm small on the side now, but this infusion set, this is that tubing that then gets connected to a reservoir. And this is just an example again. And then this is inserted into the actual pump, something like this, so that you're all connected to one, one device. So that's just kind of the basics of how that all goes together. But the big takeaway uh, is that the three main parts of a pump, the pump, the infusion set, and the reservoir. 
Now, I told you already about disconnecting. That's just a reminder that you can disconnect from the site without having to pull that infusion set completely off. Now, a little thing to know, Omnipod is a brand of insulin pump that uses a combination infusion set and reservoir. It's one piece that sticks on the skin, and we'll get into this, this later. With our infusion sets and reservoirs, we do change these every two to three days. So why do we do that? Why is this so important? Big thing is we want to prevent site irritation and infection. You are connected to this device continuously for two to three days. And so basic hygiene is very important as well as cleansing the skin before inserting a new site. Um, but if you leave it on longer than two to three days, your risk of infection and irritation is higher. So this image, you can see somebody has an infected pump site. It's kind of swollen and red all around, and we really want to avoid that. When you have an infected pump site, you're not going to be it, um, absorbing your insulin well, and it's going to take a while to heal. We want to prevent lipohypertrophy as well. Lipohypertrophy is the hardening of your fatty tissue, and this occurs when a site is overused. This can be with an insulin pump or with injections. So if you're an injection user right now, you may have certain parts of your body that you've overused and we've told you to avoid, and it's likely because we've seen signs of lipohypertrophy. We want to avoid this because when that fatty tissue becomes hardened, it doesn't use insulin as well. And so insulin might be administered there, but it won't really impact blood sugar level. So we want to keep that tissue healthy and prevent the lipohypertrophy from happening. Another reason that we change out our infusion set and reservoir every two to three days is because insulin is best kept in glass. And when we transfer it into the pump, it gets transferred into a plastic reservoir. So it starts to, to degrade a little bit faster. So by changing that reservoir every two to three days, we make sure that we have fresh insulin that is working well. And finally, insulin is sensitive to temperature, which we know. That's why we refrigerate it when it's unopened. But it's also sensitive to movement, something that a lot of people don't know. And so when we're wearing a pump on our body, it's moving up, down, forward, backward, side to side. It's moving with us throughout the day so that insulin is moving more and it can cause it to degrade faster. And so again, by changing that reservoir every two to three days, we can ensure that the insulin in our pump is effectively working. With our infusion sets, we can place them in multiple places. We want to make sure we are inserting in fatty tissue, and so you can do any location that you're doing injections. So we can do abdomen, we can do thighs, we can do upper buttock, love handle area, back of the arm. All of those are great locations for infusion sets. Rotation, rotation, rotation. This is extremely important. So on that previous slide, we talked about preventing site irritation, infection, and lipohypertrophy. We avoid that by rotating sites. So I like to think of insertion sites as real estate, which then leads into the location, 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 and rotation, rotation, rotation. <laughs> um, we have limited real estate. Your body only has so much skin. And so if we use up a site and it goes bad and we can't use that site for a while, we're losing some real estate. And so rotating helps make sure we have plenty of real estate ongoing. <clears throat> When we are thinking about insulin pump therapy, we do want to identify at least two different body sites that we will use for insertion sites. Um, again, it's just simply so that there's plenty of real estate, plenty of locations to rotate, rotate, rotate. And once again, to really drive the point home, this is to prevent site irritation, infection, and lipohypertrophy. There are different types of infusion sets, which I'm going to walk through quickly. Um, when you order a pump for the first time, they will ask you which infusion set you like. So it's a good idea to have an idea of what you'd like to order for the first time. What is nice is um, you're not locked in necessarily. You're locked in with whatever you order for a shipment. However, if you decide you want to try a different infusion set on your next shipment, you can simply ask the supplier to send a different one. 
OK, so the first one is a straight infusion set. This is the most common. This is what I was showing you an image of before. A straight infusion set is inserted at a 90 degree angle, and then it has a six millimeter or a nine millimeter plastic cannula sitting under the skin. This is what is sent out if you do not identify an infusion set. They'll just send you one of the straight plastic infusion sets um, if you don't have a preference. You can also get an angled infusion set. An angled infusion set is inserted under the skin at a 20 to 60 degree angle, depending on which one you get. It is a longer cannula. It's 13 millimeters long and it's plastic. So this gets inserted at an angle and it needs to be longer to make sure it doesn't accidentally pull out. Um, these are helpful for people who have really low body fat because when it gets inserted at an angle, it's inserted very shallowly under the skin and is more likely to stay in the fatty tissue and not enter into the muscle. And then our final type of infusion set is the steel infusion set. The steel needle infusion set is inserted at 90 degrees and it is a six millimeter steel cannula. So with these infusion sets, you insert it and do not remove the needle. The needle stays under the skin and that's where insulin is being infused. It sounds scary, but it really doesn't hurt. Um, inserting one feels like an insulin injection and then once it's inserted, you don't feel it. Your fatty tissue doesn't have nerves, so you just you don't feel it anymore. Benefits of this are that it cannot kink under the skin. It's a steel needle, it can't bend. Plastic infusion sets can kink, and then that causes an insulin occlusion. So people, certain people will have more issues with the kinked sites, and if that becomes an issue for you, switching to a steel needle set is a really great way to go. We do require our kids under age three to use the steel needle sets to get started. And there's a couple different reasons for this. Um, one of the big ones is that under three, they can't self-identify symptoms. And so if their infusion set were to kink and they're starting to become ketotic as their blood sugar rises, they can't say to, to their parent or caregiver, hey, I feel high, I'm thirsty. They just can't really communicate that well. And so we want to make sure that their infusion set is working continuously. And we can ensure that by using the steel needle sets. Another reason is they're not very bodily aware, so they run into a lot of things. And when you run into things, you can also cause it to kink. And so um, we can avoid that as well. So under age three, we do want you to use the steel needle infusion sets, but any age can use them. Little difference is with steel needle infusion sets, you do have to change them every two days. We do not push it out to three days, whereas our plastic cannulas, we can do two or three days. Tubing is also customizable. So what you're connected to on the pump, it can come in 18 inches, 23 inches, which is most common, and 46 inches. Fun little thing is that the connection part on your skin comes in different colors, so you can jazz it up. Um, I'm a pump user myself. I've been using a pump since 2005. I like to order blue in the winter and pink in the summer, and well, spring, summer, and fall. <laughs> okay, what infusion set does Omnipod use? So if you remember, I previously said that Omnipod does a combination um, infusion set and reservoir. So the way this works, the Omnipod is a tubeless pump that's worn directly on the body. This is a girl named Emily, great name. And you can see on her thigh is that white device. That is called her pod. And the pod has both the infusion set and the reservoir inside of it. So you fill your pod up with insulin, adhere it to the body, and then with a controller, you will insert that cannula under the skin needle retracts into the pod, so it is a plastic cannula. So the plastic cannula is placed at a 60 degree angle and it's six millimeters in length. This is not customizable. This is the only cannula version available for Omnipod. Um, with this pod, that's the all-in-one infusion set and reservoir, you then manage insulin delivery with a controller and that's that smart device looking thing on the right hand side. So instead of being connected via tubing, you're connecting via Bluetooth. 
You can use um, a mobile device as well to manage insulin delivery for certain versions of Omnipod, but there are very limited compatible mobile devices. And we will get into this in depth in the All About Omnipod video. Okay, that concludes our components or our parts of an insulin pump video. I'll see you on the next video in our Pump 101 video series. Thanks so much, everyone.